Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called Earth to Echo. It's basically another E.T. ripoff with the side of all the other sci-fi family films and many others, where they focus on the trio of three boys along with a girl and a tiny little robot that's shot in found footage form. It stars Teo Hom, Brian Astral Bradley, Reese Hardrick, Ella Rostead, Jason Gray Stanford, Alga Smith, Alicia Willis, Sonia Leslie, Carrie O'Malley, Virginia Lewis Smith, Peter McKenzie, Valerie Waldman, Mary Pat Gleason, Chris Wilde, Mick Watford, Tiffany Epperson, Israel Bussard, Greg Kemper, and John Carroll. It's written by Henry Gaden, who also created the story along with Andrew Pinay, and it's directed by Dave Green. The movie begins when a trio of separated friends, Tuck, Munch, and Alex, whose lives are about to change in their Las Vegas suburb known as Mulberry Woods. It's already being destroyed by a highway construction project that's forced the families to move away. Yeah, so they're making an extended freeway convention. They actually moan that they'll surely be the end of their happiness and friendship as the families move from separate ends of the country. As a result, you know, they decided to spend more time during one last week where Alex's phone as well as his family had begun to start barfing, creating all these weird electronic signals, you know, so, like it's showcasing a map of what, what's happening and why is it... Uh, you know, moving funny and everything. They're tr Both Munch and Tuck have figured out all the signals only to start at a certain port of the neighborhood. Um, that is until they spotted one one man from the construction crew to visit their homes that's often replaced by bar phones, which they claim that it might be a result of an electrical accident to the construction site. They refuse to take advantage of this and their malfunctioning phones, so they discover the image that might be an identical to a desert 20 miles away. While at school, you know, they're telling about their parents sleeping out on one of the other boys' houses and ride their bikes is what it leads the image to. Of course, you know, they started, you know, chatting around about what's going on. And of course, Tuck wants up, you know, going near a, a girl named Emma, also referred to as mannequin girl they should come up with stupid lines like this but that night Tuck, Alex as well as Munch who had cold feet had convinced to come on their last night together before you know Alex who was moving away to another foster family and eventually all three of them as well so their journey was to take their bikes out on the desert when they suddenly discovered something beyond mysterious it turns out to be a small friendly alien robot which they all named them Echo. Yeah. Who actually has stranded on Earth and needs to the help of rebuilding his spaceship. So the free friends have come together to protect the alien, trying to find some missing parts as they travel all over the desert and into a pawn shop and as well as going to the house where Emma lives. Yeah. Then later a bar and a closed amusement arcade. So yes, they, they were getting through a lot of trouble having to, to escape from all of this while having the, the tiny small robot Echo along, you know, putting him in his backpack. And suddenly a lot of strange things were happening as it starts to move all around with all these electronic parts, you know, shooting up everything. You know, destroying some things. <laughs> anyway, after that, they were already being chased by government officials who have gone undercover as construction workers to investigate the spaceship that enters the Earth's atmosphere 
that's already near the construction site. Well, they shut down Echo and believe that Echo have regrowed the ship that it would actually kill anyone on Earth. You know, unfortunately they were planning on killing the robot, but after collecting so many pieces, the kids and Echo are caught, and the governments are almost able to kill Echo as well before they escape from them. So, yep, they wound up stealing in their car, driving around, and yeah, a lot of strange things were happening, such as going straight to the to a big rig, and it starts to, to break apart. We actually see the the truck driver inside. It, it's almost like I've seen this part before, like in movies like Transformers when they started doing the the transformation. You still see the inside and everything, and then or any other film where they start to break apart. Yeah. So once they finally got back. To Mulberry Woods, they actually wants up finding, um, you know, where Echo's uh, place was located. It turns out that his, um, his secret spaceship is inside the hole that's located inside on top of the where the suburban house was. So um, Alex went inside and found out his spaceship is actually under, and then. And four kids winds up seeing it, you know, while Echo winds up in there, and and once they escape from it, you know, Echo was about to leave to find his home by rebuilding the entire spaceship using all these electrical parts that's floating around up into the sky. Yeah, tons of them all the way. And guess what? It became a huge spaceship. And they all spotted it you know, from the hidden camera that, that he's filming on. And of course, at the end of the movie, you know, all four friends had meet again on a camping trip, getting a signal from Echo's home planet. And they're talking about all the memories they had together during that one night. So by then, they're going to start sending this entire footage to the people who actually have seen this. Oh, uh, you know, this... You know, this movie just blows my mind. It's so unoriginal, uninspired, and nothing to, to deal with. It's it's not something I would really, you know, recommend for everybody who loves E.T. and all those other ones. Because E.T. is still one of the most classic sci-fi family adventures of all time. And this movie pretty much rips off every single sci-fi movie out there not just E.T. but also Super 8 you know with all these electrical parts shooting up on up the sky and everything yep Super 8 yeah we already know they rip off other films that I can name of uh, even the forgettable Last Mimsy which yeah it's a 2007 film which I don't give a crap about because it's so forgettable oh you pretty much name it and then they come up with stupid words. Uh, I, I think the actors in this movie are, are terrible. Really bad uh, child actors out there. They come up with stupid buzzwords like... <laughs> oh, uh, Googling or... Oh, I'm... <laughs> all this other stupid words too. Like, yeah, they refer to the girl as mannequin girl and all this other crap and... Not to mention, they start focusing on all the computers that they show in, such as the webcams, and they even played in the music for Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Yeah, who could forget the overture that's later been played on the Morgan Creek logo, and all this other stuff that they throw in <laughs> at random. Yeah, even they even started to skip through that part where Emma was talking about what they saw, so they had to delete that part. Yeah. I swear to God, T Tuck acts like a complete idiot at times. He doesn't seem to know what the f what the hell is he talking about. And yeah, he he's basically a, a Gary Coleman lookalike. Yeah, Munch acts like a <laughs> like he tries to be like Chunk or Fat Kid. Although he's not, oh, technically he's not that fat. He's actually more skinnier. And uh, Alex is just a huge bore. He comes, he just acts like, you know, like he's all nervous and everything, and he's all, 
you know, he's he's always, you know, acts like he's a tough guy and everything. And the fact that he experienced a lot of shit, uh, I don't give a crap. And Emma is just another blonde chick, you know, just like the Ellie Fanning character in Super 8, you know, which apparently <laughs> she can't match anything that Ellie Fanning character is. She goes around, you know, doing a fake cry right in front of that the so-called construction worker. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't believe they ruined my life and all this stuff. I, I, I don't have my parents anymore. <laughs> Big fucking deal. You know, they keep, you know, not paying attention to to what they're doing. You know, they keep moving around you know, with that stupid uh, camera. I started feeling very nauseous after seeing this. It just makes makes me feel very dizzy. I can't handle that crap. Because, you know, nowadays with found footage movies, that's pretty much what you see. You know, people not holding the camera steady. Or standing still or anything. It just boggles my mind why films like this gets made. And, yeah, because I had to see films like The Blair Witch Project, as well as Cloverfield, and all these other films I've seen. Yeah. I mean, I, I did love Cloverfield, don't get me wrong, but I, this whole found footage thing is really getting old. It's a tired trend, and it needs to die. Um, I didn't care about anybody in this movie. The characters were really lame. Um, there's nothing to deal with. I mean, they even tried to rip off that one scene you know, when Munch was confessing uh, in, inside the, the construction site. Sort of a rip-off of Goonies, that sort of way. Yeah, they even play like that, too. And the fact that this is a PG movie, yeah, a kid's film, you pretty much see a lot of dark stuff into the film. Like, they go into a bar, you know, and they're... <laughs> oh, you're going to love this. Yeah, a tough girl was about to give them a drink, you know, a Shirley Temple. They're like, 13 years old? What the hell? And then all this other crap that follows, you know, they're being chased around by everybody, even the guards. You know, oh wow, and, and the the guy that was disguised as a construction worker is a fucking douchebag. You know, he goes around, you know, stalking them all the time, just to find out what's going on. And then suddenly, you know, they, they took, you know, they took one of their backpacks, because you know the alien was inside, the alien robot. And Munch had to go um, up to the truck to chase after him. Unbelievable. Yeah, and it happened at, at a diner. This movie just is ridiculous. Uh, um, once again, I did not care about the characters. You know, the, I mean, who, I swear to God, who talks like this? I'm sick and tired of having to see all this technology that they put into the film like so much like cell phones and all this other crap that they put in yeah e even the kids don't even know how to fucking drive and they always go around you know moving around and all the way and oh they keep knocking the camera all the time and they can't even get a st steady shot I, I just had enough I, I can't stand this movie it's like 91 minutes stolen from my entire life I feel like I just want to fucking you know throw up already <laughs> and I almost did actually yeah and just leave I can't stand this this crap and it needs to stop so that's my reaction to this godforsaken movie I don't care if it's a family or kids movie it's not even worth it I, I'm shocked to amaze that this movie originally was produced by Disney. Hard to believe Disney would actually produce a film this bad? So unfortunately they they gave it to uh, Relativity Media to distribute the rights to this film and it had to be released at the Los Angeles Film Festival on June 14 while given a a summer release on July 2nd you know Trying to go against Transformers, 
Age of Extinction. Well, guess what? That movie beat the shit out of this film because they knew this movie was a ripoff from the beginning to end. They knew this whole thing was a joke. They knew that everybody in this movie is nothing but fucking idiots, you know, doing some stupid shit, which we've been seeing this many times before, you know. It's just, it's not worth it. Not worth it at all. I can't stand it. Neither should you. In fact, it even makes Mac and Me look good in comparison. In fact, at least Mac and Me had better cinematography and <laughs> and better actors compared to this piece of shit. But that's not saying much because it's Mac and Me is still a piece of shit. I know. Oh, brother. Just goes to show you what's wrong with Hollywood today. It just makes me want to hate this generation even more. And it really does. Because I can't stand the fact that we're getting so many movies like this these days. Especially with cell phones, the internet, social media, you name it. Also, product placement. They even use Google Talk and all that. And YouTube. So, yeah, all these digital cameras and all this other crap, all this t technology that we're getting in this generation just boggles my mind. In fact, this isn't a movie. It's a fucking YouTube video. That's all it is. A fucking YouTube video. I'm sorry. And I'm just amazed this movie had sort of a mixed review from, from critics, but I'm pretty much had staken for their lives to say it is a blanket E.T. ripoff. No doubt about it. And it rates a little higher than any of the good movies out there. It's just... I, I can't believe it. And I'm, I'm amazed this movie became a huge flop at the box office. Because it didn't do so well, either. I can't say any more on this one. Now, if, if you love this movie, that's fine. But to me, I can't recommend this. It's just too much. It makes me sick having to see films like this. I mean, despite of how cute the little robot was, and I gotta admit, it was really cute. I had no problem with the robot. I still think this movie sucks. End of story. But I'd say if you want to see a much better film, go check out E.T. the Extraterrestrial, or even Super 8, and all these other films. That are, are classics, you know, that are way better than anything. This total forgettable ripoff of a sorry excuse for a film to be released. At least they didn't use shaky cams or all this crappy technology that we're getting. I mean, granted, we do have product placement stuff, but that's okay. At least they're better than anything you see in this godforsaken film. Don't bother. So that's Earth to Echo, and I'm going to give this movie one and a half star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later. Bye.